Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Challenge. My website is teamchicago.tv, teamchicago.tv. I'm down in St. Louis. I'm at this great museum, motorcycle museum, some cars. Manganash is the name of the museum. Dave Manganash was a Honda dealer in St. Louis. First in this part, in the next 10 or 12 minutes, I'm just going to show you some of the great motorcycles they have in this museum. They've got oh, board track racers. They've got some of the Hondas from the early Honda dealership. They've got Husqvarna's. I'm going to go through this in the next 10 or 12 minutes and give you a basic flavor of what's going on in this museum. And don't forget my website, teamchicago.tv. Manganash Museum is two showrooms right across the street from each other on Gravoy Road, south side of St. Louis. In one window was a Triumph. In the other window, we're seeing this XR750 Harley Davidson Road Racer. This is an XR750. I forgot what year it mentioned, but they built these road racers between 1972 and 1975. They only built maybe 10 or 12 total for the factory riders. This is a very rare motorcycle, a very fast 750. The XR750 Harley may have been the best engine built during that era. In the other window was this Triumph. It's a TRW500 side valve. They were built between 1948 and 1965. They were built for the Indian and the Canadian military, probably using the flathead engine so they could run on inferior or low octane gasoline. As you look around the showroom for this museum, I had a chance to talk to the curator, Dave Larson. I'm the curator and director of the Munganass Motorcycle Museum in St. Louis, Missouri. And we're here looking around today and wanting to show you a few of the uh, different machines that we have, which was a uh, collection of over 50 years since we've been in business. Munganast organization in 1965. I was actually a customer of Dave's before he went into business. He was managing a motorcycle store very close to here. Over the years, we started out as a Honda dealer, and over the years we added Triumph, Montessa, Penton, Husqvarna, almost all the big name uh, off-road motorcycles that you can think of because our, our main background was off-road motorcycling, which was brought about by all of the accomplishments that Dave Mungan has started. St. Louis Honda began in 1965. Dave Larson was one of the first employees of that dealership, not at this location, but right down the street. We're looking at a CB1000, it's a twin cam, this bike represents the beginning of Honda moving into that super bike era of very fast 1000 cc motorcycle. Also we are looking at the step through model and the SL90 I believe. These were the early Hondas that came into the country that created that image. You meet the nicest people on a Honda. Right next to there is a 160 Honda Scrambler. I remember borrowing a bike just like this from Art Knowles back when I was 17 years old. And this is the first motorcycle I got to ride through the woods. I would take this bike through the Bar Woods and that was my first experience riding off road. What a great time I had with this motorcycle back when I was 17. And now we're looking at the CB175 and the CB350. These two bikes were the backbone of Honda. More people learned how to ride motorcycles, how to own motorcycles on these two motorcycles. And remember, back then you could not get credit so easily. So when you bought a 350, you had to have $595 to pick up that motorcycle. Now we're looking at the Husqvarna area. 
That motocross model we are looking at is a replica of the motorcycle that Thorson Hallman won a couple world championships with, and Thorson Hallman traveled around the U.S. to set up Husqvarna dealerships. And here is a photo of Thorson Hallman and Dave Manganash. Now we're looking at a photo of Malcolm Smith racing at the Elsinore Grand Prix. Malcolm Smith, a well-known off-road rider, a good friend of Dave Magnanash, a winner of many gold medals in the ISDT six-day competition. And now we're gonna look at a replica of the bike that Malcolm Smith rode off-road. And we're gonna go to a clip from the movie On Any Sunday. Classic example of the Sunday competitor who rides for fun with his usual ear-to-ear -ear grin is Malcolm Smith. The only thing different between Malcolm and the rest of the Sunday competitors is Malcolm rides a greater variety of events, something different almost every Sunday. He seems to enjoy it more than any starting line. Most riders are nervous. Malcolm's usually got a smile. Of the many events Malcolm rides, he's particularly outstanding in the rugged off-road races like the Mint 400, a 400-mile 400 race through the desert near Las Vegas. Like riding from San Francisco to Los Angeles through the roughest imaginable terrain and averaging 50 miles an hour. The race goes on night and day, and when it's all over and the other riders are almost in shock from exhaustion, there stands Malcolm in the middle of the night with a big grin. Malcolm is king of the Mexican 1000, a 1,000-mile 1, off-road race down the peninsula of Baja California, Mexico. He goes so fast, he should be in a class by himself. Every other year, the lone dust cloud across Lake Chapala was Malcolm Smith and his motorcycle. He never failed to lead. One year, he was two hours ahead of the next machine at the halfway point and rode the final 200 miles on a flat front tire. The rougher and tougher the event, the more skill and human endurance it takes, the better Malcolm likes it. As he would say himself, that was really neat. So that was Dave's friend, Malcolm Smith, and now we're gonna jump back into the past. After the turn of centuries, we see some posters and programs for board track racing, Milwaukee, Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, we see a rider from that era with his board track race bike, Richmond, Virginia. And at Peaster's Park, they had a board track in St. Louis as we see this panorama picture of that board track. Look at the angle of the track itself. These tracks were built out of two by fours laid on their edge. Just think about racing around a track with that extreme banking. And these bikes went over 100 miles an hour as you look for an advertisement for the Motordrome at Peaster's Park in St. Louis, another local rider, a map. This racetrack was located right down the road from where we're at, at Grand Avenue. Now we're gonna get a 1912 500 cc single board track racer Indian. It took second in the five mile race, second in the three mile race, and the third place in the open class race in New York. This is a four valve head 500 cc single. You can see there's a slight little bit of suspension in the front, not much, basically a rigid motorcycle and now we're looking at the four valve head single cylinders four valve you can see the carburetor and the short little exhaust pipe it's a direct drive engine it goes from that crankcase to a jack shaft and from the jack shaft it goes to the rear wheel the pedals were probably used to start the motor but they also used to push start these direct drive 
four track racers. You can see it's got a magneto at the front of the engine. And we're gonna take a look at the linkage to advance the magneto. Look at the connections machined up. The right side looks like it adjusts the cam timing. The twin cylinder, 1000 cc, looks like a flathead engine, also an Indian motorcycle. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at this bike. And I should point out with the Indians, the throttle was on the left, the right was for the advance. As you look at the beautiful paint job on this twin cylinder 1000. Board track racers, and you can see the advance to the ignition goes to the left hand grip. The right hand grip, it looks like it goes back and changes the cam timing. Two beautiful Indian motorcycles from the 1910s two jewels in this museum right here in St. Louis. A 1,000 twin and a 500 single with a four valve head. And now we're looking at a military Husqvarna built for the Swedish army. You could see it has skis attached on either side. Snow tires and the skis are sprung mounted. Over 1,100 of these bikes were built between 1960 and 1975. This one here is a 1967. Up pipe, tank bag, rig carrier, a beautiful bike. And now we're looking at some of the patents. A couple of these patents were signed by John Patton. Two years, Dave Manganash rode for the Patton team in the international six day trials. Dave Manganash competed in nine ISDT events. But this is a gorgeous group of patent motorcycles. And Dave was a patent dealer, as we see the dealer certificate for patent. Patent World Championship bikes. And on this pedestal is a 125 ISDT patent motorcycle. And as we see this Honda Scrambler that Dave won a 24-hour race with, for more information on the Dave Manganash Classic Automobile and Motorcycle Museum, it's ClassicMotorcyclesLLC.com. ClassicMotorcyclesLLC.com. And a special thanks to Bruce Brown and the crew from On Any Sunday, the movie, for that great clip. And for more information, you go to their website, onanysundayfilm.com, onanysundayfilm.com. If you want to get a hold of me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. Don't forget teamchicago.tv, walkwithdan.com.